Hey there, this is Dr. Matt Josie at Josie Family Orthodontics in Williamsburg, Virginia. I wanted to show off this case. It's a very, very interesting case, very challenging case that we just finished. Um, it took a long time. It took almost four years to finish, um, but you'll see why it took so long. You'll see what makes it so interesting. So this is Luca, and uh, Luca came to me seeking a nicer smile. He didn't like the spaces between his upper front teeth. Um, if I can go a little bit closer up here, you can see the spaces between uh, eight and nine. You can also see the spaces between some of the lower incisors. Um, notice the lower incisor right here, it's number 24, um, very proclined, uh, kind of sticking out and actually making contact uh, here with number, uh, number nine. And the reason why is because we had two impacted canines down in the lower mandible. Um, so first of all, I want you to just take notice um, about the primary canine teeth. Um, very poor root structure, very poor long-term prognosis for these two teeth. And um, these two canines, 22 and 27, have come all the way to the midline. Uh, when we looked at this under with a 3D uh, x-ray, you'll notice that number 22 actually is impinging right up on the root of, um, this is actually number 23. And, um, and so that was pushing the root distally. Uh, it's also coming, uh, this is number, number 27, coming right up on the root of number 24. And you can see that was what was making 24 kick out uh, facially. So very, very challenging case. Um, there was no way that I could get any of these incisors past these canines. So whatever roots uh, were already over here to the right side of the mandible, to the right of these canines, they were gonna go to the right. And this one right here, number 23, the root was already distal, and so 23 was gonna go to the left. Um, so we made the decision that we were gonna try to bring these canines in, and uh, you'll see the occlusal scheme that he ends up with here in just a minute. All right, so this is us um, 20 months into treatment, and once we made space, uh, in the lower anterior. Number 22 actually came in on its own, so it erupted spontaneously. We were able to put a bracket on it and begin to bring the tooth in. You can see that I'm also creating space now for number 27, but number 27 didn't seem to be making the same kind of progress uh, that 22 was, probably because we didn't start Lucas' treatment until he was already 14 or 15 years old, and so at this point we probably were losing eruption potential in these lower teeth. All right, here again is Luca at the same time point as that last pano, so we are 20 months into treatment. And uh, what we've done is we've gotten a bracket onto number 22, we're creating space for number 27. All right, here's Luca a few months later, so about five months later, and uh, we had the surgery to uh, expose and bond number 27. This is actually the gold chain that was attached to number 27. You can see that the tooth came in very quickly, uh, actually with just a little bit of help. And so we were thrilled that it didn't take longer for us to bring that tooth in. Um, again, this is us 25 months into treatment. And this is us 35 months into treatment. So we've got the canine tooth, uh, number 27, uh, fully in. Uh, still a little extra space around it, but you'll see if you look at it from this perspective that the root is still way out here. You can see the prominence of the root of 27 uh, way out to the facial and uh, really a lack of keratinized tissue around these uh, around 27. Um, 22 I was actually able to bring in and I worked on getting the root to go back lingually uh, to get the proper ang uh, torque angulation on the tooth. That's what I'm doing now on number 27. This is a torquing spring, working on driving that root back to the lingual uh, in hopes that if we get the root in the right position, maybe some keratinized tissue will appear as well. All right, and here's Luca at the end, um, just shy of four years of treatment. And uh, you can see that we've got both 22 and 27 in. Um, maybe a little bit of keratinized tissue around 27. Um, good tissue around number 22, actually. You'll see where I ended up placing those roots here. Um, I ended up torquing the root of 27. You can even almost see the, uh, uh, the prominence of number 27 here in the lower anterior. Um, I really, really torqued it lingually to try to make sure that we get as much uh, bone on the facial and as much keratinized tissue on the facial as possible. If I take you back to this uh, right here, this isn't the occlusal scheme that anybody would have drawn up. 
uh, to have a lower incisor right here, uh, almost functioning as a canine tooth. Um, but what I did is, is I made sure that he's got group function so that he can um, so that he can slide off of some of these posterior teeth. We we'll also get a little bit of contact uh, and excursive movements from the lateral uh, incisor on the top uh, to the canine on the bottom. Um, on the other side, again, group function. Um, he again has uh, an incisor here in the canine position. So again, it's not the most uh, ideal occlusal scheme uh, that one could ask for, but I would argue that he's no worse off uh, than he was when he started. And, um, and so, uh, with this kind of occlusal scheme, I think he's got a really good chance of keeping all these teeth uh, into adulthood. Um, certainly, it was uh, uh, herodontics to bring in number 22 and 27 into these places, uh, but we're really proud of the result there. So again, that's the uh, lower occlusal at the end. Um, here's the final pano. Um, you can see that the root positions of uh, 22 and 27 are pretty good. I'm actually pleasantly surprised that the uh, roots of the, of the uh, lower incisors, while there has been a little bit of root resorption, uh, we still have kind of a um, pretty good crown to root ratio overall on these lower incisors. Um, we did talk about uh, extraction of the third molars concurrent to the expose and bond procedure for number 27, and uh, the family denied that. So uh, we still have number 17 and 32 in precarious positions. And of course, we've now referred for extraction of the third molars. But more than anything, we got his upper spaces closed. And uh, we have one happy camper here in Luca. Um, so he's thrilled to finally be done with his orthodontics. I am too. Um, and I'm really excited that we were able to bring those teeth in. So um, again, I'm not going to stand by the occlusal scheme as being the most ideal occlusal scheme in the world. Um, but I do think that uh, we certainly did him a service to be able to bring those two teeth in, even if it wasn't in their most ideal positions. And again, I feel that it was impossible to bring 22 and 27 into those ideal positions. So um, anyway, if you have questions about it, I'd love to discuss this case with you. Uh, it's a very, very interesting one. And like I said, very, very challenging. Hope you enjoyed. Take care.